Hello, hello everyone. It's Stray Faye here with another episode of Olympia Soiree. Continuing with the prologue of the game. We are in chapter 3. Uh, Yamotsu. I already forgot what the chapter is called. What's the chapter called? Uh, line Yamotsu Hirasaka. Uh, last episode, we had some odd revelations. Um,. After the whole ceremony on, on the stage to get the sun to turn back on, uh, all the people were going a little, little bit crazy. They had a young man throw themselves at uh, Byakuya, begging him to sacrifice him for the ritual. Um, and then she got, she got pulled out of that situation by Akaza. Uh, and then she was just very rude about it <laughs> afterwards. Like, why are you taking me here? Like, dog girl. <laughs> Just get you out of the situation. And then they have a very awkward conversation about her uh, finding a husband uh, within one year, or else uh, Akaza is going to take one for the team and and marry and marry Byakuya. Uh, yeah, it's such, such a hard thing to take responsibility for. Uh, but yeah, we are on the next chapter. Uh, I believe Byakuya is very determined not to have Akaza as her husband, so she's going to go husband hunting. All right, good. The sun looks fine today. I was worried given everything that's happened, but looks like things are back to normal again. It felt so good to be under the warm sun. I can see Tenyo Island clearly from my balcony. Strange. I feel really for refreshed today. She had a good cry. We also had some revelations about um, the people on Tenyu? Yeah, there, there's Tenyu and there's Tengu Island. She's on Tengu right now, but Tenyu Island's on the horizon where all the other ladies of the white lived. Um, something happened where everyone died. She mentioned the Red Calamity. Uh, and she's the only she's the only one of the white that's left. I thought to myself as I looked out at the blue sky. Blue, blue sea and skies. Maybe it's because I was so angry yesterday and cried so much. Yeah, I gotta let all those emotions out. Too long spent as a doll. Possible that I feel okay. It's possible that I feel better because I spoke up for myself. Drink some, drink some water. We will give you one year to find your mate. In other words, we ask that you find your husband. There's no way I can forgive him for what he said, but I suppose I can thank him for providing me the opportunity to speak my mind. While looking out at the beautiful sparkling sea, I yawned deeply. It would feel good to go for a swim today. Maybe I'll sneak out later. Just don't get nabbed by anyone. <laughs> Wait, now's not the time for that. I need to start looking for my future husband. I mean, that's kind of what you do, right? Like, when you go out... I mean, there's dating sites. I don't, I don't think this... This world has dating apps. Uh, but usually, you just, like, you just meet people and then you eventually find someone you click with. But if you, like, never go out and meet people, you're never gonna find, like, that one that clicks. I knew my mission was to carry out the legacy of the white, but it was still embarrassing. How on earth will I find a man? Well, all I can be sure of is that I'm not going to find him just by waiting around here. I offered my daily prayer to Lady Amaterasu when suddenly... Knock knock. Oh, hi. Hi, Doma! <laughs> yeah, at least he knocks, although he was very rude yesterday. Um, called us a sinful woman. How dare he? What does he know about... What does he know about Byakuya? She's naive and is trying her best. Have you not dressed yet? You must prepare to leave at once. But what? We will be departing for Ishan- <laughs> That's a word. Ishanatan for your trial. What? Wait, what did I do? Ish Ishanatan. A sacred location where the leaders of the primary classes convene to discuss important matters. It is home to Kakuryanomiya also known as Hiroku's residence, as well as the inquiry room where interrogations take place. And then we have tr a trial, an interrogation presided over by the leaders of the primary classes where criminal proceedings take place. 
A member of Kotowari is always present during the cross-examination of those charged with crimes. Why is it my trial? What? What did I? What, did I miss something? Excuse me? Huh? Oh, we got a very looking modern building. Ishanitan. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have trouble saying that. The inquiry room. I was feeling so much better this morning, but it's all going downhill. I was at Ishanitan in a room known as the inquiry room. This was where criminals stood trial before the three leaders of the highest standing on this island. Oh, hello. Uh, you look like a very important lady of the blue. Um, I have no idea what's going on with your kimono. You have, like, poofiness and bows and that thing dangling on your fan. That fan shouldn't be, like, that fan should be bending. <laughs> I, I, it's like, when she decided what accessories to put on her kimono, it's like, all right, all right, lady, what do you want? Like, what do you want decorating your kimono, miss? She, she was just like, yes. Put everything on there. Uh. What voice should I give her? I don't know, she looks very. refined, I guess. It has been a while, Olympia. Let me first wish you a happy birthday. Welcome to adulthood. <clears throat> Thank you very much! Now you can find your husband and bear children to continue your bloodline. Oh, we have another man. Buddha man. Uh... I don't know, he's... Mm, I guess he's kind of an older gentleman. I'll, I'll just give him an old man voice. Allow me to congratulate you as well. Happy birthday. Thank you very much! And then we have Doma. To just triple dot. Thank you, Doma. This man was Grandmaster Jigan. Jigan? Of the red? Is he. His hair is not really red, but. The leader of the red. He is an outsider. He used his knowledge from the other world to save the people of the red. Who had long been shunned as descendants of the cursed blood. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe that's why his hair isn't like super red, because he's an outsider. Uh aren't like the outsiders like considered gods? <laughs> like the, that because they mentioned Hiraka, like Hiraka is like revered as a god. Okay. And this woman was the elder sister Shura of the Blue. The leader of the blue, she is the only woman to have ever held the position of leader on Tengu Island. She is highly respected by her people, but does not seem very fond of Olympia. Why? It's like woman to woman. <laughs> Maybe because... I don't know. She's the only woman. She seems very prideful. Just based on her outfit. Maybe she doesn't like another, another woman just like looming over her on the caste system. If she, like, had to claw her way up to the top. And then there was Doma of the Yellow. This bastard. <laughs> Despite the power of the Kotowari and the military in enforcing the law, all final decisions on Tengu Island were made by these three. Uh, we have first entry for the military, the policing authority of Tengu Island in charge of enforcing law and order. Dun dun. I heard what happened yesterday. It was rather heartless to summon you on your birthday of all days. However, I am in complete agreement with Akaza. You should find your husband soon and bear children quickly. After all, you're the last remaining white. I dare not imagine what might happen should something terrible befall you. Okay. I just... Just had to balk at her outfit some more. There's like butterflies lifting like the back sashes. I wasn't considered a criminal. At least not publicly. 
I had been summoned here every year since my arrival to deliver my report as the last white. In other words, I didn't like this place at all. I mean, if you're here as like the white, wouldn't we technically be considered like the leader? Like, if this is like a clan-based system? <laughs> like, we have a representative of all the colors and just by default, like, you're, you're the leader. <laughs> It is true that we have the power to nullify Akaza's orders, but... Olympia, you yourself wish to find a good husband, isn't that right? I nodded silently. He made the correct decision and acted in accordance with the laws of this island. I see no evidence of wrongdoing. I mean, he made a suggestion and it didn't really... He gave her a big time frame of like a year. Our priority should be to protect the bloodline of the white. If that is what you both believe. I'm not sure that Doma agrees with them. I mean, what's the alternative? Like, what? Do we have an alternative for, like, turning back on? They did mention Doma, like, figured out a way to, like, power the sun, right? Like, without the white. Because Byakuya didn't start dancing until she was 16, and we assume she was a young girl when when all the other ladies of the white died. Duma, have you received an edict from Lord Hiroko in Kakuro no, no Miya? <laughs> Say that five times fast. Uh, Kakuro no Miya, the palace grounds located, located past the inquiry room at Ishanatan, Hiroka is said to reside beyond the wooden blinds. Only the leader of the yellow is capable of opening the blinds or hearing Hiroko's voice. So only only Doma is allowed? Is it, and Hiroka is still alive? We must protect the white from extinction. Elder sister Shura glanced towards the blinds. Oh, oh is he there? Beyond those blinds is the Grand Chamber, uh, Kakuri no Miya, where Lord Hiroko is said to reside. Of course, I never had the chance to hear Lord Hiroko's voice before. The world began in darkness. Goddess Amaterasu created the sun, and the god Tsukuyomi created the moon. Yes, yeah, Tsukiyomi, the creator of the moon in this world. Then from the other world came the outsider, Lord Hiroko, on the boat made of reeds. Do we need to have an entry for reeds? A perennial plant that grows near water. It is said that Hiroko arrived in this world on a boat of reeds. Lord Hiroko then decorated the three primary colors on Tengu Island and gave special power to each. Blue was granted the power to return souls to the heavens. Yellow was granted the power to hear Lord Hiroko's voice. Red was bestowed cursed blood and land. Well, that's not very nice, is it? That was the lore behind Tengu Island. Which is why the primary colors were the highest ranking classes on this island. So the primary, a tier of colors compromised of red, blue, and yellow. The leaders of each are the highest authority on Tengu Island. Those in the primary tier may wed other primary colors, as well as those of secondary colors. Okay, I would do, like color mixing. Are we gonna have like green and like purple? <laughs> and like orange? Okay. The outsider, Lord Hiroko, I heard that he used to speak directly to his subjects from behind those blinds, but I don't think there's anyone there anymore. I, I, if, he's, if he's old, he's like... And they say, like, Doma's the only one that I can hear him. And, like, Doma can just be making up whatever, like, he wants then. Who's to say that Doma is lying? I really shouldn't think about that at a time like this, though. Why is Yellow the only one who can hear Lord Hiroko's voice? Okay, she's saying what I think. <laughs> Not that I'm ex accusing you of lying, Doma. Okay, girl, let's <laughs> get it in my head here. 
But as leader of the yellow, you're the only one allowed to go beyond the blinds to hear Lord Hiroko's voice. It feels a bit unfair. Instead, you have the power to return souls to the heavens. That is something we in yellow cannot do. He is right. Might I remind you that the red was cursed instead of gaining any special power? <laughs> I mean, like, poor red. Like, I guess they got land, right? But, <laughs> like, got the, got the shaft there. <laughs> the curse of the red. I recalled what the Kaza told me. After listening to you two, I had better refrain from any further complaints. Now then, Olympia, you are very blessed as a woman. Why is that? You can choose your husband as you please. Others must seek their mate from a select few candidates. In other words, many are bound to those they do not love. Bound to those they do not love? I suppose she's right. Though the reality of the situation still hasn't settled in yet. Don't look at me like that, Olympia. I didn't mean it in a rude way. I apologize. I just want you to know that having the freedom to choose means you may choose unwisely. What do you mean? There are many foolish and ruthless men out there. I'm worried you may find yourself in a situation less than desirable. Might I remind you that there are men who sincerely love their partners all their life? I feel, I feel like sure as a woman that has probably been burned. Also get to see side pro profile of Jigen. I suppose so. Doma has no input. I'll keep everyone's advice in mind except for Doma because he's not saying crap. Oh, hi. It seems the trial has ended. You're... You were standing outside of Ishanatan. I wanted to express my regret in being so hasty with you yesterday. Forgive me for taking so much of your time, but I wish to request an audience with you once more. Red was bestowed cursed blood and land. Does that mean Akaza is also cursed? His papa's attitude makes it hard to believe that anyone's cursed him. I've heard the red are much more prosperous than the other colors. That is, if you don't already have other plans for today. I hate to admit it, but it's not like I know where to start looking for my soulmate. Everything happened so suddenly yesterday. I should also apologize for acting hastily. There are a few things that I like to ask about. Will you lead the way? So I can choose any person to be my husband? Do you have someone in mind? You know, we don't know any men yet, except for Doma. I don't think we want to marry Doma. Not at all. I just recall that you mentioned it. Are you sure about this? Why is it only I am allowed to choose? I believe you mentioned that marriage is determined by a person's color class. In other words, you many are bound to those they do not love. Of course, it's not like there's anyone similar to my color class to choose from. The reason is because you're from Tenyo Island. You... No, most people living here are unaware of a certain rule that is required by law. The law states that the women of Tenyo Island can choose any man from any color class on Tengu Island. But wait! I've never heard that before! You aren't toying with me, are you? The Red Calamity. Uh, Red Calamity. An incident that struck Tenyo Island 13 years ago and resulted in the deaths of the women of the white and the disappearance of the sun. Olympia was the only survivor. Does this have to do with, like, the Red Curse? 
as well. I assume you left the island because of that disaster. If so, I'm not surprised. How much does he know? If he really is in charge of all the records on the island, then he must know everything. My body tensed up from the anxiety and anger churning inside me. No, I have to stay calm. Losing myself in front of him now would be uncalled for. Specifically speaking, Tenyo Island is a special area with extra extraterritorial rights. Where only women of the white may live. Where do the men live? Are there men? The highest ranking class, according to Tengu Law, surpassing even those of the primary tier. Those in this class are allowed to marry any person from any color class. And where no man may reside. It has been designated as a prohibited area as far as Tengu Island residents are concerned. Prohibited area, an area restricted from entry. Tenyo Island remains the only prohibited area in the world. It was written in our records ages ago, but the reason behind it is unknown. I am rather interested as to why such a rule was created. Before you say anything more, I know nothing about what you just told me. Yes, I assumed as much. But I can't say this. I'd appreciate it if you keep it to yourself and not meddle in my homeland to satisfy your own curiosity. My apologies. Gathering information is part of the Kotowari's mission. I meant no malicious intent. Maybe I'm being a bit too harsh. I'm sorry about that. With all that's happened since yesterday, I've been a bit on edge. I've known that the women of this island get married when they reach 18. But I didn't expect that you would take such a great interest in my search for a husband. There was a hint of sarcasm in my voice. <laughs> and the, the way you worded it wasn't, wasn't great, but I, I think he, he probably has good intentions. In any case, what's most important to know now is that you can choose any man of any color class. So please feel free to choose anyone you like. Easy for you to say. I'm still struggling with the first step of figuring out where to start. I mean, it's like, what has been what one day? Girl, go, go outside. The only men I've spoken with so far are Doma, Lord Jigen, Tsukiyomi. Wait, you talked to Tsukiyomi? And the staff at the Doma estate. I mean, I'm assuming it's not gonna be a maid or a guard. That's right. Before I forget, let me introduce our deputy director. Oh, <laughs> is he a bachelor? <laughs> Hey, Kuroba, are you awake? If not, get up. Okay, Kuroba, we've seen that name before. A man of the black class who works as a deputy director at Kotowari. He's a doctor specializing in immunological research. He has a friendly, easygoing personality and a knack for reading the room. Immunological research, that seems that seems like like a high high end uh high-end research to be having in this like kind of world i mean i guess there are like they have really big buildings here it's, it's a weird it's a weird world where it's like kind of stuck in like past japan but there's magic and skyscraper shrines huh oh hello introductory cg you look just like a like a regular dude <laughs> like there's black hair. Guys. Okay, he's, he's, yeah, well, he said he's, he's a researcher. Are you gonna take my temperature, sir? Listen to my heartbeat? Uh, what voice do I want to give you? I think of my, cat my, my limited catalog of voices. Can I do Ignis? Seems like I... Seems like a little bit of a gruff fellow. <clears throat> Let's try not to shred my voice here. Nice to meet you, miss. I'm the Kotowari's deputy director, and an ally to all women. Call me Kuroba. An ally to all women, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Healthy, aren't you? Couldn't keep up with him, but more importantly... His sudden appearance took my breath away. His hair and skin! Like, the opposite. Like, you're just you're just white as a ghost, and here this, this guy's, like, tan and full of vigor. 
Wait, is he? Um, I'm sorry if I'm mistaken, but are you of the black? That I am. Gasp. So there are people of that color class here. I've never met one before. Uh, I might have been rude. It suddenly struck me how rude I was being and quickly bowed my head in apology. And uh, yeah, people balk at you for being white. I I'm so sorry. I just heard how rare the black was, so I felt that as a white, we were similar. People always stare at me with such curiosity. It is why I always wanted to meet someone from the black who might understand. Please forgive me for being so rude. Can't say I'm bothered by it. It's true, we're a rare bunch, but not as rare as you. Actually, I'm happy to hear you say that we're similar. Here's hoping we get along. Th thank you very much. Why, <laughs> why, dear Lady Olympia, you're not at all like the rumor said. Huh? For, so for someone known as Doma's mistress, Hakes, of what? <laughs> the doll made of pearls, the goddess of the white. You're a pretty honest girl, you know. Huh? Who's saying I'm Doma's mistress? Excuse me? W well, um... I'm a bit flustered right now. Come on, no need to be shy. But that aside, what is that black cord around your neck? How was it... How was it able to tell you about my health? The stethoscope? Oh gosh, she's that naive. Huh? Huh? This. <laughs> Wait. You haven't been sick before? Has it never been to a hospital? I, I don't believe so. <laughs> Amazing. I guess Olympia's invincible after all. And that's good. Being healthy is the best. To hell with going to hospitals. Why are you laughing? No, no. I'm just really happy. I shouldn't have laughed. Forgive me. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, the doctor, he, he's trying to heal people, right? Like, I mean, nowadays, you all might think, like, oh, doctors want people to be sick. Just so they can make money, but... Shouldn't go in the profession with that outlook. You want to heal people. Well, don't go doubting me now. This here is a stethoscope. It's a tool used to check on someone's vital signs. A stethoscope? I've read about them before. I had no idea we had them on Tengu Island. A tool to tell you about the body's distempers. How wonderful. Isn't she something, Koroba? Yeah, I think I might fall in love. What? <laughs> Y you two are playing with me, aren't you? I'll thank you to not behave so rudely. <laughs> are they being like wingmen here? If you ever get sick, come see me. I'm a licensed doctor. I'll give you a free checkup. Oh my. No, thank you. I gave him a stern glare. I was born on Tenyo Island, and i never seen that tool before. Although I may be seen as primitives by those on Tengu Island, we don't deserve to be laughed at. Uh, I'm sorry. You're right. I shouldn't have. I was surprised by how quickly he apologized. Like I said, I was just happy to see that you're as healthy and fit as you are. Tenyo Island has been a mystery to even the Kodawari, so I admit your health was a matter of concern. A mystery? I shouldn't have lashed out at him like that. We rarely had visitors from Tengu Island, so it makes sense that our circumstances wouldn't be well known. And with as seriously as Akaza takes his job, he must have had his concerns as well. I guess I've gotten so accustomed to protecting myself against others. It was difficult to speak with people like this. But saying nothing wasn't gonna fix things. I should call my nerves for now. I wasn't thinking about it from your point of view. I'm sorry. I wanted to tell them what a wonderful place Tenyo Island was. But I couldn't. There's no way they could see for themselves the beauty of the island. Not even I could go to the island now. All that was good about it was gone. Akaza, I should apologize again for speaking so harshly. No, don't worry about it. 
Well, it's nothing new to see people get into scuffles over differences and misunderstandings. But let's just all move on and be friends. Right. Now then, I heard Lady Olympia is searching for her soulmate. I'm pretty rare, so how about me just putting himself on the table off the get-go? <laughs> huh? I have an examination table in the other room. It doubles as a bed, so we can do our thing. We could do our thing now if you want. What? Okay, that's a little bit rude. Koroba, stop joking around already. You're only making things worse by stirring up conflict. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're right. She's just so innocent, I couldn't help myself. Why you? Well, here's to our future, Olympia. You're already you're putting your best foot forward here, Koroba. I quickly turned away from him. Seems nice at first, but he's just full of awful jokes. Okay, he's um, full of... Yeah, there's people like that. It's like the crude has, has crude jokes just at the tip of their tongue. He's not fit to be my husband at all. I better not get too involved with him. Now I assume we're done. If you'll excuse me, I have to begin looking for my future husband. Now hold on there, my little princess. Where exactly are you going? It had to be a place packed to the rafters. <laughs> packed to the rafters with men. Or you could skip all that and go to on a date with me. A date? You don't know what a date is? It's a method of spending time with the person you're interested in. I, I know what a date is. I'm astonished that you think I'd ever go out on a date with men like you. Of course I know what a date is. I've read books before. <laughs> uh, all our knowledge is just not from experience. <laughs> the question is, where do I find someone suitable? Uh, oh, don't be so mad. Just relax and quit it with that formal attitude of yours. You're kind of hard to get to, you know. You need to be more approachable. Huh? It... Is that so? Come to think of it, yesterday in the square, everyone only looked at me from afar. It's the same with making friends, isn't it? No one wants to hang around someone who looks like they hate their guts. I glanced at Akaza. You're right. I can't be close to anyone who's cold-hearted or lacks any emotion. I mean, <laughs> pot calling Kettle Black here, is it call Akaza like no emotion, but you're, you're hiding behind a mask as well. <laughs> Right, right. So you might want to try being friendlier for now. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. I know. I should talk to Tsukiyomi about my situation. Um, I'd like to go to Yomi. I know someone who should be living there now. Huh? Down there? That's a surprise. Who is it? His name is Tsukiyomi. He took care of me back on Tenyo Island. Is he a real person? <laughs> what? Uh, come to think of it, I've heard of him. But are you sure? What do you mean? You do know that the souls of the people from Yomi are fed to the sun, right? What do you mean, fed? He gave a sigh, noticing the frown I, on my face. <laughs> yeah, remember all those little soul gems that we're, that we're playing around with? I suppose it sounds like an honor if I said that their souls were offered to keep the sun shining. But those guys living in Yomi are underground and not allowed to come up to the surface. There's two major groups living down there. One of them is made up of criminals from the surface who have been exiled. The other is a group marked as breeding failures and given a color unaffiliated with the colors on the surface. Oh no. Like, so, like, not even, like, they're not even actual criminals, they're just, they're just born that way. They're... Huh? Those failures are sent to Yomi upon birth. In other words, those who live in Yomi either will never see the sun again, or have never seen the sun before in their lives. Oh, and, and, that, and yet they're being used to feed the sun, they don't even, like, get the benefit of, like, seeing it. My body went tense at Koroba's explanation. Sorrow, remorse, anger. The storm of emotions inside was making it hard for me to breathe. I can't believe how stupid I am. 
I thought I understood everything, but I couldn't have been more wrong. I mean, she's, she's a naive protagonist. She's like us. Right now, she knows nothing of this world. The more we learn about it, the more horrible it seems. The very same people who sacrificed their souls to the sun were those who could never see it. I see. That was all I could say. I felt like I was going to crumble from the weight of sorrow being reminded of that fact. I can't believe it never dawned on me until now that the people of Yomi aren't blessed by the sun. I knew that all along, but I didn't think about what it really meant. I'm such a fool. No, you're not a fool or anything. <laughs> oh no, you made her cry. The sun would never shine upon them. The mere thought sent a shiver down my spine. They would never feel the warmth of the sun. Some had never even seen it before. Despite those living conditions, people are still living down there now. And their souls were what made the sun shine. Someone who offers prayers to the sun. I should know more about the people there. Um... I know it's asking a lot, but I still want to go there. I want to see for myself what Yomi is like. If so, Koroba and I will accompany you. We cannot risk something happening to you. I can feel my body tense up again. I mean, I need some sort of guard, right? <laughs> if, it, if this is like a den of villains, like a den of villainy and scum, apparently. However, I personally believe, personally believe that you should learn as much as possible. Knowledge is power. Discovering something new could bring about significant change. Change. Strangely, his words seemed to strike a chord inside me. I had my own fears, but I still wanted to learn more and expand on my knowledge. I couldn't help but want to learn as much as I possibly could. Will you be going to Yomi? Yes, let's go. I stepped outside with Akaza and Koroba, taking notice of the Shrine Gate. The big old skyscraper shrine. <laughs> the Shrine Gate. It's so big and he's like a supporting pillar. <laughs> uh, say, what are your thoughts on Lord Hiroko? Why do you ask all of a sudden? The Amano Miyashira was created by order of the outsider Lord Hiroko, right? That is correct. It is made of show offerings. The souls of those on the surface used in death to build the gate for Lord Hiroko. And with the souls of those in Yomi, we can make the sunshine. Which do you suppose is the greater honor? I guess with like the sun, the sun one, your soul is consumed, right? Well, like the gate, the gate ones, like. You're just, like, decorating it? Still technically existing? Sorry, it's a question that's tough to answer. But no. The greater honor. And theoretically, we shouldn't be playing with souls like this. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that. I'm feeling somewhat guilty, I looked up at the gate gleaming under the sun. Lord Hiroko lives in the Grand Chamber at Ushanatin, right? Do you think that's really true? That's not something Olympia would say. You're right. I'm sorry. I mean, we don't know if he exists or not. He's behind the blinds. Or only Doma can hear him. So, like, he can very much just not exist. Not that I doubt Lord Hiroko, but... Is Doma really the only one who can hear his voice? Well, I understand why you'd be... Why you'd wonder that. As far as I know... No one's seen or heard him coming out there lately. Oh god. <laughs> Karoma's voice always destroys me. That- the Ignis voice. Drink lots of water, I'm gonna take a cough. I got some- some- the lodging later. That's what I thought too. It's between you and me. I actually tried to open those blinds once. 
Just because I was curious about what was behind them. Oh, you, oh god. <laughs> I get very much arrested. Well, he's not in Yomi, so did he get caught? What happened? Nothing. I pushed, pulled, punched, and swore at them, but nothing. Which means... Maybe the chamber beyond those blinds is empty. But robot, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> like, speaking some sacrilege here. <laughs> I mean, Doma's a doctor. He's probably very curious. It's like, he, got, he has to know. <laughs> he has to prove his theory. He gotta punch those blinds open. <laughs> Come on, loosen up a little. I'd like to look upon Lord Hiriko's face at least once while I'm still alive. What probably happened was the mighty Lord Hiriko didn't want to see my pretty face. Maybe Lord Hiriko really isn't there. Olympia. Have you ever visited the other districts aside from the yellow? Huh? No, I've only ever passed through them by carriage or seen them from the balcony. Then why don't I show you the other districts before we go to Yomi? I can only show you the primary colors with the little time that we have. Yes, if you don't mind. Going on a little tour of the island. We are currently standing in what's called the Central District. Central District, an area open to all color classes. It is the home to the Ama no Miyashira. Kotowari Headquarters, Ishanatan, Sundial Plaza, and Military Headquarters. The district is busy with people and carriages at all hours of the day. It is the home to the Ama no Miyashira. Ishan okay, saying the exact same thing that the, that the glossary said. The Kotowari and the Military Headquarters and the plaza that is open to all color classes. Open to all color classes? Maybe I can start searching for my husband here. Let me be brief with you on the other districts. Oh. First, the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Oh, oh, and then we got secondary. Uh, there's a lot of colors. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is the secondary colors of vermilion, orange, jade, green, cyan, aqua, violet, purple, and fuchsia. All right, all the, all the blending. Like, like how there's like in between colors, like like with green. There's also jade and like cyan kind of blends towards like the blue side. All right, so we got secondary. The tier below the primary color class, the primary classes born from blending primary colors. They include vermilion, orange, jade, green, aqua, cyan, violet, purple, and fuchsia classes. They may marry from the primary or secondary tiers. I guess like yeah, from somewhere from the secondary tier. I'd be thrilled to marry a primary color. They'd be they'd be marrying up, I suppose. Oh wait, we have a uh, oh back up. Uh, we had log. Hello. Oh, can I? There is a lot more of those color classes. We can pull up the glossary. Uh, let's see. Were they included, or do I need to, like, back up a bit? I hope I, like, don't have to read them for them to pop up. Or else I can just reload. Okay, it looks like I might have to, like, actually acknowledge the entry for it to pop up in my glossary. Alright, let me just, like, back up a bit. <laughs> okay, that was easy. I can rewind. Alright, <laughs> crisis averted. Oh wait, there's nothing there. Okay. I don't know why those are highlighted, but yeah, they don't show up in my glossary. The 12 colors are expressed as different physical traits, usually affecting hair and eye color. Those of the blue will have blue hair and eyes, for example. Alright, well, I, gu I guess the explanation is simple enough. Like, if you're, if you're, like, what would they even say for, like, a purple glossary entry? <laughs> but children aren't always born with their parents' color. Half of them end up taking on a brown hue. Uh, based on their color traits, 
they're registered under Pied and grouped into either Ko or Otsu color classes. All right, so now we have some... So we got Pied, those born from primary and secondary color classes who do not exhibit the color traits of either tier and are classified under the Pied. This tier is further separated into two classes. They may not marry higher classes. We got Ko. One of the color classes of the Pied, those who exhibit three color traits are classified as Ko. And they have Otsu, one of the color classes of the Pied. Those who exhibit four or more color traits are classified as Otsu. Alright, this is like that's kinda of confusing. Uh yeah, okay. So these are like these are very much the lower classes. The Ko and Otsu are the most dominant colors found on, on Tengu Island. They're the majority, but they have the, the, the least amount of rights. As for the other colors, we'll talk about them later. Then let's head to the blue first. Yeah, the blue district. Everything's blue. <laughs> wow, the blue looks so vivid from up close. It's a primary color, just like yellow, but the difference is so stark. It's fascinating. The blue tiles atop the white walls are both deep in color and bright at the same time. As you may already know, Elder Sister Shura is the leader of the blue and the first female on Tengu Island to ever hold that position. Yes, I'm well, well aware. I know she's a good person, but... Oh, hi. Speaking of the devil. Ah, uh, I see a pearly butterfly in my yard. Forgive us, Elder Sister Shura. We are not here on official business today. As she is unfamiliar with the districts, we have been showing her around the island. We will take our leave if you bid it. Oh, ho, ho. I am not here to reprimand you. It is simply my first time to witness Olympia visiting us in the Blue District. I was a little surprised. Olympia, I am so pleased to have seen you twice in one day. <laughs> Are you? I regret that I haven't visited sooner. To think that the Blue District would be so beautiful. Is it not? I believe blue to be the best color here on Tengu Island. Then again, I am certain the other colors would say the same. Elder Sister, give, give a small wave of her fan. Blue is given the power to return souls to the heavens. Batsu. Got yeah, Batsu. The power used to draw out souls from human bodies and crystallize them into show. Once the soul is extracted, the body crumbles and disappears. It's the power used to transform souls into show. I feel such a pride each time I look at the Amano Miyashira, the show embedded in the gate were created using the blues power of Batsu. I'm sure Lord Hiroko is very pleased. Batsu. The we have Ugg. <laughs> we have Ugg again. She remembering something? The powder of the blue is indispensable on Tengu Island. The Kotowari is truly grateful. Oh ho ho! It is not often I hear your praise. Is it perhaps our pearl butterfly is here? It is because I have not had the opportunity to express my thanks before. Now if you will excuse us, we will be taking our leave. Olympia, let me know the minute you find your husband. Uh, I will. I give an awkward smile and hastily turn to leave. Man, it's been a while since I've seen her. But she sure is something. Just as powerful as the outsider Lord Domar and Lord, Lord Jigen. Lord Hiriko wasn't the only outsider. There are three others on Tengu Island. Jigen of the Red and Dome of the Yellow and... Uh, wh who was And? Koroba, why didn't you say anything to her? You probably didn't want to talk to me anyway. 
Did they not get along? Not that I really get along with her either. Now then, off to the red we go. I oh, I oh, off to the red we go. Yeah, we're in this very, very European blocky buildings. We got the red district. Hi, again. you're just here. Oh, I see our young ones decided to come and visit. It has been a while, Lord Jigen. I wanted to show her around, so we brought her here to the red. I could have prepared some sweets if you had sent a messenger ahead of you. We mustn't be inconsiderate, Akaza. I am terribly sorry. Akaza? He's acting modestly now. Is it the leader, right? <laughs> Lord Jigen, it's nice to see you in good health. <laughs> I have managed to stay out of the hospital for the time being. I'm glad to hear it. After shaking hands with Karuba, Lorge again turned with me with a gentle smile. Olympia, it feels refreshing to take a stroll around the island, does it not? Uh, yes. Staying inside reading books does have its value, but there are some things you can only discover by going outside and searching on your own. I hope you'll keep that thought in mind. Yes, I certainly will. Hmm, very well. The fresh air does agree with you. I insti instinctively put my hand to my cheek. Remember, knowledge is a powerful tool that can shape your future. Well, that's the red and the blue so far. I'm sure the yellow needs no explanation. We're not going there. I will escort you to the other districts again when time permits. I thought for a while before responding. Thank you very much, but next time I'll try to go around on my own. To be honest, I was a bit scared to go out, especially since I've rarely been out by myself. But now that you've shown me, both shown me around, I think I can handle it now. Thank you both. I knew it. You look better with a smile on your face. Huh? <laughs> I instinctively put my hand to my cheek again. Smile? Was I smiling? You were smiling, all right. <laughs> I smiled in front of others. Oh no. Couldn't believe it myself. But it's true I was feeling happier. So, um, maybe we should get going? You know, to Yomi? Oh, got yeah, Kunado. This is the Kunado sh Shrine Gate. It marks the entrance to Yomi. Uh, Kunado Shrine Gate, a shrine gate leading to Yomi. Shol shoulders. <laughs> the soldiers assigned to Yomi patrol unit guard the gate, and only those with an official permit may pass to Yomi, and vice versa. It's a gateway through which only those with permits are allowed. We got permit, official pass needed for transit between the surface and Yomi. There are passes for merchant, deliveries, new paper, newspaper vendors, recreation, and those in special positions. The gate that was situated between the secondary and Pai district. The Pai district is the area of Tengu Island inhabited by the people of the Pai de Tier. The district near Kunado and the secondary districts. There's a wharf there, which a boat can be taken to the Dawnlight stage. Okay, we've been there before. Surroundings seem lonely and barren. So this is Kunado. Yomi is at the end of a long slope, which since ancient times has been called Yomotsu Hirasaka. There are no records of the name's origins. So we got Yomotsu Hirasaka. A slope that connects to the Kunado Shrine Gate to Yomi. It is the only way in or out. Yamotsu Hirasaka? So dark down there. Goroba and I both have permits, so we will explain to the guard that they're with us. Thank you. We headed down a long, dark slope. The cold air clung to my legs. People actually live down here. Yomi. 
I learned from Tsukiyomi that it was an ancient word meaning land of the dead. I wonder who decided that was a good name. I mean, it's underground. <laughs> a little bit on the nose, but... Then again, Tsukiyomi is kind of a strange name, too. Tsukiyomi? Is it just coincidence that his name is the same as the god who created the moon? That aside... Are we there yet? I would be hesitant to continue onward if it weren't for Akazo and Kurobo's presence beside me. That's how quiet and unsettling it was. We're almost there. Soon enough, I began to see something up ahead. Oh. Well, you got Yomi. It's, it's a lot of buildings. <laughs> it looks like it's pretty full of life. Although the flower's there and got the little spider lilies, so, like, signifying death. See, here we are. Gasp. I was taken aback at the sight of it. I thought this place would be desolate. I mean, it got lights and everything. <laughs> Pretty festive, even got, like, little festival lights. They got, I, guess, I guess the people down here, like, try their best. They got, gotta try their best to, like, cheer up the place if they're not allowed to see the sun. I assume Yomi would be as dark and eerie as the slope leading down to it. Look at how bright it is here. The buildings around us are all so colorful. Some parts are old and run down, while other parts were exquisitely decorated. It was a collection of so many different colors in one place, yet there was a curious sense of unity to it. It was very different from the originally arranged structures on the surface. I didn't expect it to be like this. <laughs> you look excited. I'm sorry. I always wanted to visit Yomi, but Doma never allowed me to come down here. <laughs> so you're the obedient type. Everybody thinks I'm a coward who can't go against Doma. I suddenly regretted what I said. But for some reason, experiencing this kind of regret was strangely refreshing. Never looked anyone in the eye or spoke to them before. I behaved as a doll all these years, but being with a cousin and Kurobo like this was affecting me in new ways. I can be myself now. Ah, Cluster Amaryllises. Are they real? Cluster Amaryllis, a poisonous plant with red flowers that bloom in autumn. Wait, is that like the spider lily? Is that their real name? I, I don't know. <laughs> they sure are, but it's not unusual to see them in bloom here since Yomi's... Yomi's different from the surface. Is that so? Bright red flowers adorn the main street. They look incredibly beautiful here. Uh, look over there! She is so white! Uh... I look... <laughs> can't just... can't just say that to people. I quickly look around and saw some residents of Yomi watching me from a distance. Akaza calmly brought his hand to the hilt of his katana. Alright, let's not kill people now. How did her color fade so much? Wait, she isn't gonna die soon, is she? Oh, they think she's, like, sick. Huh? Did she just say fade? Stupid! You don't know anything, do you? That's the famous Lady Olympia of the White. Huh? The one who dances for the sun? I'm sure of it. I saw her perform on stage before I was exiled. Wow, you're telling me that's the real white? The real white is standing in front of us right now? A real white? I've never seen one before. She really is white. I, s <laughs> I see. So that's a white. It's no different from when I was on the surface. Even though they were curious and talked about me, they still kept their distance. Seems that I'm not welcome here. Do you think we should go back? What do what I do think is that there's no reason for you to feel bad about yourself. Hearing him speak to me so gently came as such a surprise that it rendered me speechless. To start, you're not forcing people's souls out of them. You're merely returning the souls of those who have passed to the heavens. There are certainly those who are displeased with Lord Doma's decision, but many others are grateful. After all, he has bestowed the people of Yomi with the honor after death. 
Olympia. No need to be scared. Take another look at them. But you haven't seen their colors before. Oh. Now that you mention it... Since, uh, since we're here in Yomi, let me explain how mating works when it comes to colors. <laughs> the birds and the bees here. Let's say blue and yellow are married. Their offspring, offspring will either be blue or yellow or take on both colors, resulting in green. Those are successes. And we have like the muddied up brown ones. Successes? Like I said earlier, some are born outside their parents' colors and take on brownish hues. As those people begin to bear offspring of their own, other colors begin to appear. And sometimes a rare color or a person possessing multiple color traits appears. But the people on the surface deny their existence and send them down here as Versi. Versi, a lower tier comprised of rare colors and those exhibiting multiple color traits. Regardless of their parents' standings, those classified as Versi must live in Yomi and are targets of discrimination and harassment. That's terrible! <laughs> like, they don't even get to live with their family just because they're... Just because they're a different color. Yeah, I mean, like, a lot of those colors would be considered beautiful, though. Like, if they're exhibiting multiple colors. Could they be, like, a rainbow person? Huh? And they're ordered to never return to the surface again. I didn't know what to do. Should I look away or keep my eyes on the crowd? They're here in Yomi because of their color. Look how white she is. She's so creepy. They're sent away from the sunlight just because of their color. I mean, she, she could have been in the same boat if she didn't have, like, the powers. Those classified as Versi are essentially deemed as failures. Failures? What a horrible word to use. I glanced at the crowd again. I wanted to say something to them, but I wasn't sure what could be said. Suddenly... I guess their colors are considered disgusting to those on the surface. Isn't that the girl from Tenyo Island? Which means she's of the real white lineage. Should we try to nab her? Don't... Don't say that! Couldn't help but raise my voice. The storm rising from deep inside my heart can no longer be controlled. It doesn't matter what everyone on the surface says. There's no disgusting colors. None. My anguished outburst filled the air and made the science that followed even more pronounced. The people of Yomi were staring at me. They were just standing there, eyes fixed upon where I stood. Ah! Uh, it was as if time had stopped. Even Akaza and Karobo were silent. I'm such a fool for saying that! I I'm sorry! I, I really should go. I quickly turned around when someone suddenly tugged on my jacket. Please wait, Lady Olympia. Huh? Um, but I... I never expected you, you to hear... I never expected to hear you say such a thing. Who is this? Forgive me. My name is Masuhana of the Versi. Please forgive me for approaching you like this. Uh, no need to apologize. It's fine, really. Oh, Masuhana, thank, thank you very much. She smiled with relief. Oh, we don't get to see a portrait of her, though. I want to see her colors. I was sent here to Yomi after I was born because of my color. What? The hint of blue when her ash-colored hair looks so lovely on her. Lord Karoba said it earlier, but failures like myself are not allowed on the, to live on the surface. People from the surface usually scowl whenever they see us. But you're not like them. Thank you so very much. Oh, but I... It wasn't right for her to thank me when not what I said earlier was in defense of myself. But her eyes were so kind despite their sorrow. I wanted to see her smile. I like your hair... like how your hair is the same color as the ocean on a rainy day. Huh? I'm 
sorry that I never tried to learn more about Yomi until now. We may all have unusual colors, but that doesn't make us disgusting. Never. If someone on the surface ever makes a face at you, make a face right back at them. Or ignore them if you want. But don't ever feel bad. What? You should be proud of your beautiful color. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Lady Olympia. I, I'm terribly sorry. For someone like me too. Please excuse me. Uh, what's wrong? Wait. I'm sorry for if, if it was something I said. She ran off because you made her so happy that she didn't know what to say. R really? I looked around and everyone is still standing there, staring at me. <laughs> Maybe it was just me, but they looked happy now. Akaza, I think she'll be just fine. On the contrary, her impulsive behavior may bring about more trouble than we need. Ah, uh, well, I suppose. That's not true. It's... Well, you know. Well, if something happens, I'll take care of it. Wait. Did he actually say something kind of kind again? I must be imagining things. Kind of, I mean, kind of rude. Either or. He's, he's taking responsibility for you. <laughs> the crowd began to disperse, and the people bowed their heads to us before they departed. Even without seeing their faces, I could tell they were happy. I hope I'm right. There really are a lot of colors here. I've never have known I just stayed on if I just stayed on the surface. It never even crossed my mind. You know the lore of Tengu Island, don't you? Lord Hiroko created this island and the primaries. Primaries, a collective term refer to the red, blue, and yellow classes. He then split red, blue, and yellow spirit crystals into t into two to create a man and woman. Huh? <laughs> Great, he just reminded me that I have to look for my husband. <laughs> Many colors were born from them, leading us to the present. Sounds like a fairy tale to me. It would make more sense if the story explained the science behind it. This is the do doctor man here. What do you mean? I have a theory based on actual case studies. If you're interested, interested, we can talk about it in private. Uh, let me think about it. You just want me to get you, <laughs> just get me alone in the office. <laughs> Sounds interesting, but dangerous at the same time. I know. Since we're here, why don't I introduce you to some friends of mine? I'm sure you're gonna love the place. What place? Look, you see that large building over there? It's called the Sh Shikinjo. Shikinjo, a bathhouse in Yomi run by Yosuga. Its waters are blended with herbs with medicinal properties that can help restore and revitalize the skin. It is frequented by both the residents of Yomi as well as from the surface. It's a luxurious bathhouse with dining, recreation, it's got everything. A bathhouse? Tsukiyomi mentioned something like that before. They have a special herbal bath, don't they? I've always wanted to try them. Sounds like you want to go for a dip with me. Where should, where should I start washing you? I find it hard to believe that you're the deputy director of the Kotawari. Let's go. I can assure you there is someone here in Yomi who can be trusted. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna getting harassed here by Koroba. Uh, Chicken Joe. Oh wow, this chapter's going for a while. We're meeting a lot of people. I incredible! Is this really a bathhouse? It's even more lavish than Doma's Manor or Shantin. I'm never gonna be able to say that word. Then again, something so magnificent and unique could hardly be compared. There was so much to see. I didn't even know where to look first. There are cluster amaryllises here too. Are there? There. <laughs> Uh, my fair lady, might I tell you your love fortune? Who dis? Oh, person. Oh, hello. Sexy person. Gasp. I turned around at the unfamiliar voice and found a young man smiling at me. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, he, he, has, he has a candidate, uh, voice. It is free of charge. You need only swirl the waters in this basin with your hand. M my love fortune? <laughs> I see you are flustered. It is a pleasure to meet you, dear Olympia. My name is Yosuga. <laughs> Sorry for that awkward cut there. Uh, my boyfriend just like stepped into the room and I didn't realize their office door was just like wide open because I was letting like the cat just run in and out. Well, that, that was awkward. Here I am just lusting over these 2D men. Alright, <laughs> moving on. I am sorry to surprise you in this way. I have heard much about you from Tsukiyomi, so I could not help myself. Oh? You know Tsukiyomi? Yes, I have known him for quite some time, so I hope you'll consider me a friend as well. He's probably not a good person if he's friends with Tsukiyomi, a huh? <laughs> little, little god. Is he a god? Like, he's named after, like... One of the Japanese gods. I tried to observe him without making it too obvious. Purple. It was the first time I had ever seen anyone with hair and eyes in such a deep purple. His figure was slender, and he moved with much more grace than Akaza and Kuroba. So, shall I read your love fortune? You have begun to search for your husband, no? You know? Gasp. Only through rumors. <laughs> just, it's just... It's been like a day. <laughs> it's like already. It's like, oh, Olympia. Olympia's going around looking for, for a husband. How, how fast? How fast rumors travel? A love fortune. I'm not sure what to expect, but it sounds interesting. After some thought, I sat down and placed my hand into the basin. Slowly, the flower petals floating atop the water began to move. I wasn't stirring my hand very much at all, but the petals rose and fell in a dance around it. I hope I hear something good. Wonderful. I see happiness in your future. Well, that's good. Get, get plenty of good endings. Seems you'll soon meet the person for whom you are destined. Your soulmate. Huh? Are you, are you sure? You're not just saying that, are you? Yeah, you know, fortune teller, just to, like tell you what you want to hear. I know many women love to hear that, but in your case, it is true. I'm not sure if I can really trust this fortune. You seem to possess a rare type of luck. You'll be able to ward off evil and bring forth happiness. Really? I hope you don't mean to tease me by saying so. The rumor you heard is true. I am searching for my future husband. He can trust me. Unfortunately, as with all fortunes, there are no guarantees. If you make the wrong choices, your fate can be tipped in the wrong direction. Is that, is that saying I can get a bad ending if I pick the wrong choices? I, I'll keep that in mind. I couldn't help but sit up straight in my seat. I looked around and saw Akaza and Karoba speaking to someone else. I turned back to Yusoga and asked in a hushed voice. So, what did Tsukiyomi say about me? Did he say anything strange? Let's see. He mentioned you are a wonderful swimmer who often disobeys his warnings to stay away from the sea when it is rough. I was looking to see, his, <laughs> see a different pose for him. He's a very fluffy, the fluffy sash. I, I just like to swim. He said you once crashed your head against the corals while chasing after a fish. Ow! And were distraught to find yourself bleeding from it. Why, that Tsukiyomi? I need to have a nice long chat with him. How very fascinating that our dear Olympia was once of such a wild and daring spirit. The Pearl Doll, rumored goddess of the white, behaving in such a lively and carefree manner. 
th that was all when I was a child. Did he happen to say anything else? You mean like jumping into the sea? Well, with that as much as a thread of clothing on? I was, that, that's embarrassing. <laughs> like when, like when your parents start telling you stories about like when you're a kid and like bath time or something. It's like, mom, stop. <laughs> That was also a long time ago. Tsukiyomi taught me that I need to wear a bathing suit when swimming around Tengu Island. Oh, were, were all the, the ladies on on Tenyu naked? I guess there were just like ladies around. No doubt a good idea. But all the other girls on Tenyu Island went swimming without. I, I guess because it's, it's just an island of ladies. They probably all know each other. My voice suddenly caught in my throat. Oh. Oh no. Talking about the island is bringing tears to my eyes. I can't cry now. You'll think I'm strange. Oh. Oh, he's gonna change the subject. In any case, Tsukiyomi has shared with me many stories about you. So, do you know where he is? I actually came here to see him. I'm afraid he is visiting Tenyo Island at the moment. Huh? You, you could just go there? <laughs> Sometimes he returns quickly. Other times he is away for weeks. I see. There's no need to worry. He has a restful place of his own deeper underground. Huh? Even deeper underground? He lives in a under a place this lively? You should be able to see him if you continue to visit. I don't think he's lying, but... Hey, Yasoga. You done with her fortune? She wanted to try a bath here. Before I knew it, Akaza and Korobo were standing behind me. I'm glad they didn't see me tearing up earlier. Ah, where are my manners? I completely forgot. Tsukiyomi told me before about this bathhouse. Hmm. I wish I could accommodate you, but all the rooms are fully booked. I'm sorry. Still as busy as ever. Amusing, isn't it? That one would journey to hell in search of paradise. Well, do your best to grab all the cash you can. Hell? I wonder if they often refer to Yomi this way. I mean, it is underground. <laughs> if they refer to that as that, like Tsukiyomi being even further underground, it seems like a little scary as well. <laughs> Olympia, if you will be returning to look for Tsukiyomi again, how about tomorrow? I can prepare a bath. That sounds great, thank you. Which would you like? You can invigorate your skin, improve blood flow, increase stamina, heal sprains, whatever you please. What are these like hot springs that just that seems like the fountain of youth? Like the ja Japanese love their love their hot springs. <laughs> Since you're searching for your husband, perhaps a bath to beautify the skin would prove with worthwhile. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, husband? Don't be shy about it now. You're like, you're actively looking. I felt my cheeks grow flushed at the thought. Oh my. Well, if you say so. Splendid. Then I'll be awaiting a arrival tomorrow. Yusuga, Yusuga bowed gracefully and bid, bid us farewell. Nice guy, isn't he? Yes. I can't wait for my bath tomorrow. He is the most trustworthy person here in Yomi. If you are in trouble, please go and see him. Military personnel do visit Yomi on patrol, but only at certain times. Could it be that you don't want me down here, Akaza? It is as dangerous here as on the surface, as you learned before. Anyone can appear before you without a warning and threaten your life. The only way to assure that will not happen again is to shut yourself inside the manor. She doesn't want to do that. She won't be able to meet anybody. Then again, I recall that being the, 
the primary way you spent your time until now. Would you prefer to return to it? But then I'll be forced to marry Akaza because I, I wouldn't be able to meet anybody. You sure is good at rubbing me the wrong way. I appreciate your concern, but I need to leave the manor in order to find my soulmate. As you wish. Back to the surface. The sky. And it's now night. Oh, you going to the library? Hi, Doma. How unusual. That you'd be out all evening. I thought I mentioned yesterday that I was going out to search for my husband. I assumed you would return quickly in shame. <laughs> it's been a day, come on. This guy. This guy. I'm, he's really coming off as a hated character. Irritated, I bit my lip. The old me would have stayed inside, just keeping to myself in the manor. But I've changed. I learned that you were deceiving me. Someone of the white can marry anyone they please. Deceive is such a harsh word. I only told you what I needed to keep you from getting hurt. Yes, the law of this island allows it, but how did the men of the island react to you? I mean, so we're nice. <laughs> and I will take on the responsibility of fulfilling that role. I assume most of them were too frightened to approach you. Some may draw near out of sheer curiosity, but that is certainly not love. No man on this island could truly love someone of the cursed white. Then again, are you even capable of love? Are you? <laughs> he left his left hand slowly came towards my cheek. What is he doing? Uh Okay, is she- is she abused? Like, uh, excuse me? I'm worried, child of the white. Worried that you'll murder your love. His fingers lightly grazed my cheek. So <laughs> stop! I feel sorry for the man you will love, as he will undoubtedly experience suffering at your hand, will he not? I'm sorry! I turned my face away and crumpled to the ground. That won't happen ever again. This is your warning. I rubbed my eyes as I heard his footsteps slowly depart the room. They were wet with tears. Listen carefully and promise me. Promise that you'll find your true love and live as happily as your mother has. Mother! Oh, things get sad. Remember, Mother. Alright, that's the end of the chapter. Oh, yeah, I don't like Doma, but I don't know. I don't know they're gonna flip it on me and be like, Oh, he's actually a nice guy, because... I don't know, I've seen too many tropes of where, like, the asshole turned out to be good. Uh, okay, so this is a good place to stop, though. Next we have the chapter, The White Mice Clan. Maybe this will be a little bit more... A little bit more peppy of a chapter. <laughs> Sorry, I have a sad music, though. Okay. Well, I hope you guys are having a fun and relaxing time. I gotta go rest my voice a bit. <laughs> and I will see you in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.